Another thing I'd really like to talk to you today about is RSS feeds or RSS sites. First of all, you need a reader. And I'll try to explain what a reader is in a few minutes. But let's explain what RSS sites are. Normally we have things called favorites right here. And then we have favorites on one side. Now, on the other side we have something called feeds. And feeds are, are, are items that can be delivered to us from any place on the internet to our, our, our own feeder, or our own reader in this case. And uh, we can see and get information on anything. So if, how can that help our students or our children in school? Well, if you, if you have an upcoming project on something to do with space, we can go to a space site and let's say it's on the planets and we can find out information on the planets and have it sent directly to our feed and then just go review our feed and find out the best information from what we have gathered over the next week or two. If I want to find recipes on turkeys, I can get it over the next couple months and get all the recipes from all over the world on uh, for turkey recipes. So let's take a look and see how exactly how you do that. All right. First time I went to, and I just typed in most popular RSS sites, and I actually I came up with uh, some other ones, but then I just went to space.com. And uh, I'm gonna try to look for a little RSS carrier sign. So I'm gonna, when I find it, I will click on it. Oh, there it is. Now it says XML in this case, but it's usually an, uh, a little yellow box like this. And it says, what is this? I'm just going to click that on. And it says RSS feeds. And it's now called, of course, Real Simple Syndication. And so now I'm going to subscribe to that feed right here. And it says subscribe now. And I want to use my Google Reader. So I have Google right here. And so now I go back to my Google Reader and it's going to add. It says you're not subscribed to this feed yet. So now I have to subscribe to it. And once I do that, I'm now going to have all the information that comes from space.com and all the new information that comes from that website. I can even type in queries on exactly specific information that comes to me. So if I don't want to just see everything that I just want to see on planets, I could actually do that also. Now this is a, this is a reader. And so this is Google Reader. It's free. And uh, you can download it from Google uh, www.google.com If I'm an English language learner I can also transfer these settings into my own language. Let's say I'm a Spanish reader and I want all this in Spanish. I'm going to go to my website that uh, is a free website so that you can also write this down, www.mrborden.info or mrb.bz. And I'm going to show you how I've embedded uh, videos into my website and how I can link this to online learning modules. First, I'm going to go to the math site and I'm going to go take a look at geometry. And what I've done is I've actually... Um, embedded different codes for math videos that came from the Prentice Hall website. So that when I go to this site, you're going to see a teacher teaching you or your student or son or daughter about math. Hi, my name is Ms. Blake and I'll be helping you with the sides of a parallelogram. Let's first go over this key concept. It states the opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent. Which means now what we're going to find is that um, all these different uh, online learning sites have sub, uh, various subjects so that you can access any of the other subjects that uh, you might need help with or your child needs help with. Let's go take a look at some of the other subjects that Prentice Hall has available when we go to phschools.math. We go up here to this site and I'm going to increase that. Let's go to the language arts section and let's go to our textbook compare it. Uh, companion site, excuse me. So I can kind of look at which grade my student is in. I can look at the book that I have and I can access the information. Let's say it's a ninth grade literature book. So I can go to, oh, there's sixth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade literature book. 
And I have poetry, video clips, crossword puzzles, self-tests, and all sorts of other things that students can access to help them, engage them in learning about short stories, fiction, nonfiction, themes in literature, and heroism, which are all part of the California standards. Not only is this a good site, but the, pretty much every, every textbook today comes with an online learning site. Again, this is phschool.com. This is glencoe.com site, and it also provides many different tools that can be accessed by both parents and students, as well as teachers. I just typed in California, and I'm going to hit student parent, and we can pretty much go to any subject that we'd like to investigate, since mathematics seems to be one of the ones that students struggle with most, and parents struggle with teaching their children. Let's go to their math site and see what it has. So I click on that and it pretty much gives me all the different math books and the skills and the concepts necessary for students to be able to pass mathematics. So let's go to grade six and find out exactly what this California program has to offer. We get to this and it has problem solving techniques and problem solving. So as a student, I can work in my workbook, I can go to studentsnetworkplus.com, I can go to a scavenger hunt, I can have a math review. Let's go to the math review. And as long as I have Adobe Acrobat Reader, I guess I can pretty much view any of these different, uh, different, uh, let's see if they're videos or they're at least some knowledge that aligns with your student's textbook. There it is. It's a PDF form. So it gives me in full color exactly how to do something and maybe I can help explain that to my child or to my student. So that's Glencoe's. And that's just a little bit of uh, as to what online learning modules can do for your child or your student. Well, the future is a lot brighter than we think for uh, students and parents and teachers. Um, I'm right now in a 3D virtual website called Second Life. You can go to set www.secondlife.com and you can access this site. It is free. Um, you create a virtual character. There's my virtual character. And uh, it allows us to uh, communicate and uh, interact with others as well as it does the environment itself and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about we're gonna go over here to the cell landmark site and we'll go over to here I want to keep this card and it's gonna to talk to me about all the different things we're going to move real quick and I'm going to move over and show you the virtual site itself so what we're gonna probably want to do is teleport to excuse me, one of these other sites. So once I go back One of the great features about using a program like Second Life is its availability to all sorts of uh, different various subjects. I'm going to scroll through and we're going to kind of look at some of them. Here's a virtual state fair where we can probably, it's directed towards education. Um, here's one from the National Science Foundation. Language Lab teaches English to students from 45 countries. Very good. Uh, let's keep going and see if we can't figure out some things for some younger kids. 
Okay, I found a site called Virtual Africa. And here's the ranger station where students can go explore Africa and uh, investigate some of the, the things that uh, Africa is having a problem with. Also, it will show different and various animals so students can um, interact with those kinds of animals. Uh, you can speak also using these things. So let's keep going. Let's see if we can't find something. All right, there's a speech by Nelson Mandela. I don't know if we're going to go into the teepee. I'm sure there's some other places that we could probably teleport to. The last tool I'd like to show today is called Scratch. And Scratch is made by MIT. And if you go to scratch.mit.edu, you can find Scratch, and it's a free program. This is one of the things that I've created. And you can see it's an animated volcano. Now, they have many different projects that you can basically download. You can download my project right here for free. And then it tells you who was the last person to create this. Now, I think I was the only one who created this from the very beginning because I wanted to try to create an animation. But there's many other things you can do. You can create your own games. And kids love to do this. But all the tools that they, they learn by doing this are very valuable tools. Now, I'm going to show you the most popular things. And you can tell that it's for little kids all the way up, but mostly for grades in the younger schools. So what we can see is they have, you can remix the Pokemon song. There's a scratch competition. There's Dr. Mario. Um, let's get six things on how to get famous. They teach you how to do that. Scratch Idol preview. Let's uh, look at this. Okay. And then what's going to happen is we're going to be able to open up their project. And once you download uh, their program, so I can show you their program in a few minutes, and we're going to be able to download this program. See, I can download Scratch Idol Preview. Um, then I can change it and make it mine. It does credit the person that created this ahead of time. And there's plenty of things that you can do with uh, these animations. You can create games. Here's one of his previews that he's doing. So. It's going to, I, I believe, play. And so I can take his and I'll say download. And it's going to let me download this. And I'm going to open it. Now, it doesn't know right where to open it to begin with. But once I get into the program, it will show me that I can. And I'm going to go to my Scratch program right here that I downloaded for free. And it's going to come in here and it's going to upload their project into here so that I can get new projects that I want. I'm going to start to do that now from the internet. And I can create and take their project and make it into mine. So I can change the whole theme into something that I really like, whatever your son or daughter does. So there it is, Scratch Idol. So I can take Scratch and I can take the first movie clip and I can move it around and it's just amazing what they'll learn about computers and animation that they can use later on. So this is an awesome tool that should be used by parents, teachers, students today. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions I'd be more than happy to answer anything on my blog site or my website or this wiki page. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've been informative. Have a great day.